Happy Monday, everybody. It's December 6, 2021. Yeah, December 6. A date that will live in... For me. Mediocrity. 12, 6, 2, 1. Where were you on the 6th? Of December 2021. Police want to know. Everybody wants to know. The press, the cops, your mother-in-law. Your mother mother-in-law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Father time. Mother Nature. That's right. Uh, Tony Stark. Uncle Ocean. <laughs> Uncle Ocean. <laughs> That's my DJ name. Bro- Brother in law. Uncle Moon. Ocean. Hello, everybody. We're going to. Uncle Ocean. Unc- Unca Lotion. Uncle Ocean. Uh, Unca Lotion. Is that it? Like Unca I, brand lotion. It's the only <laughs> lotion I use. I just always love whenever anybody has more than one nickname. Because they get increasingly weird, and I feel like the like the third nickname for me will always be Uncle Osh, aka Uncle Osh. <laughs> Uncle Osh. I, I want like my fourth or fifth nickname to be aka the Schism. That's fine. Schism. <laughs> yeah, I, that, you're, we often refer to you as that. <laughs> the divisive plot. <laughs> the deciding vote. <laughs> <laughs> the ambitious car. The boat made into a man. It's the one, the only, the cybernetic joy jolly. <laughs> joy jolly. That now is that one of Santa's mercs? Is uh, that what? <laughs> he's Santa's Deploy the joy jolly. Favorite jerk. It's the boat made a man. <laughs> Boat made of man. A boat made made of into man. a man. I oh, was a boat a once, but oh. now I've been. It's like Turbo Team, wish. but for wish. yachts. Yes. Gotcha. Hey, remember when we were going to be on track? I'm ready. We're good. We just needed to warm up. Hello, yeah. everybody. Uh, Andrew, you ready to start the show? Oh, uh, no. You have muted yourself and we <laughs> oh, yeah. cannot hear yourself. Oh, yeah. I did not want to take part in this derailment. <laughs> no, I, I want to focus. <laughs> as a, All right. I'm a, won't even board this train as a conductor unless I'm sure that uh, you know, we're going to keep it going. Alrighty. Very soothing voice. Uh, ooh, I got to turn the chat on. Hello, chat. Thank you for joining us here. All right. Let's start the show. Andrew, I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Mean, joined by Brian Brushwood. Ahoy, ahoy. Justin Robert Young. Good day, friends. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Yar, mateys. Welcome to the Weird podcast <laughs> Today. Yar, yar, that's captain yar. bryce castillo captain, to all you yar. out there captain bryce hello all right um so china sent a probe uh and a, a rover to the moon right okay yep um they've they you know they are superpower they've been pursuing space exploration and i would say uh they did do a messed up satellite i was about to say well they haven't messed up like the Russians. like no they did a satellite blow up thing that sent debris out there to show it and then the russians did that which we'll talk a bit more about that in a second but uh there was some uh interesting images that china their rover captured at the far end of a lunar scape what looks like a structure so wait hold on so so it is on the moon so yes that's it, it, it it successfully made it there. They they sent it there and it made it there. And now it is on the moon, yep. roving roving about, taking pictures. And it looks like so we were watching, we were looking at this picture right now, that there is a lunar landscape, there is a a flat horizon, and then there's just one curious little dimple it, right there. Or, or, or sorry, not not a dimple, but a bump on, right, right on the horizon. There, there's also kind of a dark line in it. So like if if I told you this was a four mile away photograph of astronauts on the moon. Or if I told myself that, I think I would believe it. Oh, like it's two, two, two human two, two people astro, close to each other. A, of, astro bros. Yeah. Cause the resolution is a little low. Uh, yeah. It's not, it does it's not look quite a 4K a little, it, it does look like it could be a little artifacty. Could, Bryce, can you zoom in? Uh, enhance. Enhance. Yeah. We're enhancing it. Enhance. Right, we're enhancing uh oh, yeah. yeah well you can you know, which which is a thing now by the way people laughed at it like oh the silly they enhance like you can't do it no you can't actually now but, yeah no um, now i can plainly see one of them is a little bit chunky the other one it's it's laurel and hardy on the moon yeah because it does look like <laughs> it looks like two different things that are next to each other and it almost looks like there's if not a separation from the ground there is like I don't know. It looks it looks like there's some kind of dark element before it gets to the lunar surface. Oh, Ollie, we've done it now. We're on the moon. A hundred years after our prime to boot. 
I, I don't know much Laurel, Laurel and Hardy. Laurel and Hardy? Yeah. I don't know any Laurel oh, and Hardy. Oh, Hardy, you old poop. Okay, that's not, that's definitely, <laughs> that's something. I mean, it like might be a 10 years younger reference, but we're still, it's still on social security. <laughs> So, so uh, when this photo came out, was there any speculation as to what they were seeing? Well, scientists have made it clear it's probably not manufactured. It's probably uh, not Laurel like, and Hardy. It's probably <laughs> not. So it's not like a Taco but, Bell or anything. Oh, I, I mean, this, Taco as far Bell as I know, this just came out quite recently, like when the last, like when the last twenty four hours. Uh, and the good news is, the photo was taken by a lunar rover. So. Mm -hmm. It can row. Oh, wait, so it can, it can row go closer. There. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it can yeah, investigate. Gonna, can, can you imagine gonna like move the... on over to this Michael Bay movie? <laughs> the rover is like a semi-autonomous, and it's thinking enhance, enhance as it walks closer <laughs> to, to, to the anomaly. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, gonna try to. They're gonna take it two to three lunar days. We'll spend closer, you know, to get close to it to check it out. So they're actually like, yeah, we have a rover. They're like, oh, what's that? What's that? I don't know. And then somebody's like, well, you know. It's a rover. Yeah, it can rove. So how many yeah. rovers are... Yeah, we know are... it's a rover, so what's your point? <laughs> uh, uh, how many mm -hmm. rovers are on the moon currently? Is that the only... Functioning? Yeah. Like, that's it. That's yeah. it, right? There's no other... Uh... I feel like that. We should be firing more off. Yeah. Get more rovers up there. I thought, uh, Now, now we, we've talked about this, about whether or not the moon was much of a worthy midpoint on our quest for Mars, or if we should just skip it. And... Uh, at various times, you know, we've 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 kind of you know ebbed and flowed. But I I think last time we discussed the issue, it was like, it's a rock, it's a moon. What are you gonna do on it? You know, do a push up, no, eat an egg I'm on it. On, no, I'm I'm, I'm all in. I'm all in on moon. I'm all in on yeah, all on moon and we should Mars. Be chucking I don't your stuff up there. Why not? Yeah, it's close. We gotta think if we gotta apply the the you know the sort of the abundant sort of philosophy to space and the idea that we would have to choose one or the other is just shows we're so conditioned by like apollo era missions yeah. versus well i i think the question was and i'm both half remembering and also being overly reductive but i think it was something like if you had 10 billion to spend do you budget any of it to visit the moon or do you budget all of it to go to mars i'd mm. budget it all towards reusable craft that let us go anywhere uh, I'd be upset with myself for not calling that the the thing that took those pictures a red rover, which I've been in my head. I should have said on that the earlier. on the moon on though the moon? on the moon yeah versus I mean, the Mars rover I'm, yeah I mean oh, I'm, because I'm not it's Chinese because it's Chinese now I get it yeah okay. yeah, yeah. Right. I really no, wanted to call it a red rover I waited oh. too long and now we're all stuck in this awkward no, moment no 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 it's it's all the more special for it that's good, good. I that's appreciate good. you yeah <laughs> yeah I mean that's the other part of it. it's like you know they they've got an image of it and it's unfortunately all of their ai image recognition technology can only tell if they're like you know a uyghur or a dissident no. <laughs> yeah. that, like, they're like according like... to the, the we don't know what it is we only have one thing that we know for sure they're not chinese yeah whatever whatever yeah. It, yeah. it is it, it's social credit score is plummeting that's right <laughs> well and that's yeah. kind of the you know you mentioned uh like ai enhancing of images earlier andrew and i think the fact that this is like not on earth and we don't even know what it is would would i think make it tough to create all of that new visual data uh it in it well so to your point yeah yes and um you can train systems on other sorts of things and say okay like there's there's that if you know a lot about the the optics of how it was taken if you know a lot about the glass, the resolute things like that, then you you may an AI system can learn to sort of spot blurriness and noise and deconstruct and say what's more probable from this. But yeah, if you took a system that was just trained at like cats and dogs and doing super resolution on Earth, it would just make stuff up. It would just make details up. Then we would get and Laurel again, and Hardy it, on the horizon. Maybe yeah, you could. And that that was like there was what was the imaging system. There was an imaging, there was an up resolution that was putting in like the faces of like Jake Gyllenhaal or something like that into stuff. It oh, was like, Jesus, because it was just overtrained on certain things and it would give texture and stuff. And people were like, wait, I think that's a face. In, <laughs> uh, and, and that's, and it's one of the things like, you know, you can do a lot with AI and not all things labeled AI are created with the equal care and craft. You know, I, I for fun train, you know, models and stuff because i'm curious to see if i give it a little bit of the information what can i see whatever 
And, you know, sometimes I make stuff that's useful, but I don't have the same sort of care and attention to what I do that, like, I don't know, a real AI researcher does. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and let's see. AI, AI image upscaler adds face. <laughs> um. Uh. So what, while while uh, uh, Maine is looking for our our, our, our Jill in Hall here, uh, uh, the the timeline now on figuring out what the hell this is is what twenty uh, twenty four to forty eight hours something like that. Two to three yeah. lunar days two for them to, to oh, get how there. How long is a lunar days? day? Two weeks for real. Actually, I think it's a full month. That's why it's a lunar calendar. That's a day. Ooh. Like well, this... to go from a new moon to a full moon to a new moon is twenty eight days. That's a lot. Why the month. hell do they say two lunar days instead of in a month? Uh, We're on Earth. Because it two, sounds better. Two, two, two oh, months. Yeah. Two yeah. months. Ooh. And then, you know, I'll tell they you have what, to take the I'm, picture. And... Now I'm glad that uh, uh, Biden isn't sending any representation to the Olympics. That was the final straw. <laughs> the lunar Olympics. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, hey man, I we want like to, uh, to send representation. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Uh, we have we have we have a Jill in Hall. Where's our Jill in Hall? No, I've, it's Ryan Reynolds. Sorry. Oh, is it Ryan Reynolds? Uh, ah. And this, I don't know that uh, apparently from the story, somebody was using an image up railing, like commercial software, commercial software to, to upscale images, and they took the before and after, and it goes in there. Find it tries to find things that can sharpen it, and recognize this stuff. So Bryce, if you have the photos, uh, oh. I can try. I put it in the chat for Skype. But like, yeah, that was a very realistic rendering of Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, exactly. Music. It was it was a poster of his movie Free Guy. <laughs> uh, so here's uh, the here's the original picture. Okay, and it looks like it's just like the side of a building, like scaffolding or something. No, look at the uh, look at the red in the upper left. Look at the red. What do you see in the upper left there? The red in the upper left. No, not like the re the red section there. That's good. Does it? Yeah. You kind of see a face there. Oh man. Now, now uh, we're just uh, revealing oh okay. The fact I see. These are glasses. these are the eyes, and this is the nose. I can kind of see that. That's okay. Now, so this has been up resed with the gigapixel AI. Hey, 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 oh my God, that's just a very <laughs> sharp face of they, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> and they didn't sharpen the rest of it, so it's like it's a little bit better everywhere else. But it's I don't very know that it's clear. Ryan Reynolds. I don't know if it's actually what it looks like him. It's but it's like yeah, it's it's certainly Ryan. Reynolds that is like, a face. So. It is yeah. It is it is a human face <laughs> with eyes, nose, and a mouth. <laughs> that is an amazing picture. Uh, uh, so yeah, Bryce. It could be depend how you train it. You're absolutely right. If it's just. If it's just trying to go, eh, maybe it's a face. Other, you know, versus other techniques. You know, maybe it's a face, and maybe I'm amazed that everybody continues to go to Patreon.com/slash Weird Things and supports us. You're right, Justin. Don't just let it be. Instead, get back to Patreon.com/slash uh, uh, Weird Things. <laughs> uh, oh me, my! Oh. <laughs> it couldn't be any easier. Uh, by going to Patreon.com/slash uh, Weird Things, you can support us uh, uh, at any level you want. Many already have, and they get priority access to the after things podcast yeah the two of us by which i mean us creators and our patrons mm -hmm. have been creating this wonderful podcast for nigh on a decade and we want to keep on going so uh, 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 uh don't just let our bank accounts be uh give us money patreon.com slash weird things Notice in true Beatles fashion, they just wrote out the other members of this team. I know they said two, like yes, yeah, the creators I know, I and the it. patrons. I I did the collective too. I, I covered uh, my butt on that one. Yeah. All I have to say yeah, is help. I, I, I stand behind. I don't Roll think you can back. tell me that I feel different. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Hey, fine. All fine. things must pass. <laughs> Remember when we were? It's a fab. been a long and winding road. <laughs> If you're gonna kick us out, then I'm just no, gonna do no, 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 no. Uh, gentlemen. Yes. I have one more story for you here. Mm -hmm. Ready. Um. So, uh, you know what we need? What do we need? Let's say we do something silly or stupid or whatever, and we annihilate society, right? Maybe, sure. maybe it's feeling not the way silly we mood. I'm just gonna annihilate well, yeah. the side. I'm feeling maybe, silly today. Maybe it's not AI. Maybe we come up with like some form of planking that ends up killing ourselves or something. Okay, you know? instant like, like, death something planking. Like, yeah, we all try to do the milk crate challenge and get broken necks. And there's nobody there to take care of us <laughs> or whatever. Well, mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? 
So there's a group that has this idea of what they want to put together is a basically a black box for the earth. And okay. uh, they're basically putting this in the middle of the Australian desert. And if it's a giant steel structure and it's going to sort of like create stuff about climate change, species extinction, all this other stuff recorded. So if like somebody shows up and there's no people there, they're like, what happened? A black box like, well, let me tell you, here's the story of what happened to these people. See, what I don't understand is why don't we make the whole planet out of the black box? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So is it gathering like real time information? And would it be something that, that a, a species could like, you know, is it like indexing the internet or, or Wikipedia or, or, I, I, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. I ain't read this article, but I've seen a picture of it and I read the headline and that tells me, I'll bet you dollars to donuts, uh, uh that, uh, that it doesn't even exist, that, that it's not even a thing. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a it's possibility. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. Go to earthsblackbox.com and okay, tell them okay. it's not real. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it does. It looks a lot like a Java sand crawler. I'm not going to lie. It does. It has a bit of a tilted uh, uh, shape to it. Um, I mean, so, I, I guess that's for, for, my, for my money here. And that's fine. Look, if you want to build something that has, you know, in case of emergency, there uh, you are speeding up whatever comes next by by imparting so many of our lessons i feel like in our modern world it would be better if we fully understood some of the lessons of the fallen civilizations before us right like we have we have tried to relearn them i guess my my question is do i trust the people that are doing this to actually impart the right lessons and not well, just have the... a bunch of new yorker cartoons yeah i mean well part of it is like they're like they're saying well if climate change collapses our civilization Wait, okay There is a non-zero chance of that, but I'm not aware of any realistic scenario where even even our modern sort of first world sort of life really gets severely impacted. There is the idea of bad weather towards the later part of the century. There's other things in there and the things that won't be pleasant, but it's such the problem is we're in 2022. And if we're experiencing some parts of that. It has been so gradual that we're like, well, yeah, we think maybe maybe there is some more damage because of this hurricane, maybe not, maybe this, whatever. Our ability to absorb and grow and keep you know extending is so significant that it's like I don't I have a hard time believing, you know, that all of a sudden, like, ah, it just completely broke because of, you know, it sounds it's just not in the scenarios. The scenarios are greater could be much lower, larger chances of wedding, you know, flooding, worst weather and stuff, but you know. I think we endure that and not to say that's good or that we should follow that path. But Well, it, if the idea is to raise awareness and to uh, focus attention on uh, an imminent existential threat, it seems like this is very similar to the doomsday clock from the 1980s. Only the difference is they didn't pretend like they were actually going to build a clockwork device that measured our impending doom. Maybe should have. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we wouldn't have died all those years ago. <laughs> yeah, I think. I, I mean, I mean I, I, what I'm saying is, if if what you want to do is raise awareness, reach the metaphor stage, and then just stay there. Uh, why actually build anything uh, unless you? Because you follow through. They really should have called the Doomsday Clock the Panicky Pete Scale. Yeah. Uh, I. I, what? I uh, so okay. This um. Is- outside of the like environmental hey this is for when the world dies yeah isn't this kind of a very cool idea of just of 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 storing information archiving information in a new way oh i'm I mean, I'm for it yeah i mean imagine in imagine what we know about life say a thousand or two thousand years ago and how little or much we know and if they had even more preserved direct data or so, something where it's like they could directly tell us what what was happening uh, they've got like a ticker on their website of some of the data that they're capturing and it mostly just looks like tweets from selected accounts but then they don't say what accounts they are but you can tell their tweets because they say things like rt and have at signs in them yeah that's my that's my issue i i, I think i <laughs> it should think, be more than tweets well I mean, <laughs> in fact the less tweets the better <laughs> like I, I would, I would prefer that there be no tweets. Well, and and, and I think you're onto something, Bryce. Uh, yes, I do think it's very, very cool to have some kind of capsule that represents 
the best of planet Earth and what humanity did and was about. Uh, but if your core belief is that the Earth is going to be going bye-bye, maybe don't store it on Earth. Maybe put it in a satellite that you shoot out to the edge well, of no, the but solar system. No, no, no. It's not like no, you're going to blow up No, because you're No, because you want people who are are on Earth to find it. Like when, when, yeah, when in the world yeah. where there is survivors yeah. and the Earth still exists, or, or or no, or the next civil, God knows what the next thing that happens, right? Either natural life or some other visitor, or something like that. But and it's not you want you want that little yeah, barnacle to be like, oh, I wonder what this is yeah, about. I mean, they kick it open and it's like uh, uh, at track step down, <laughs> like screw <laughs> you, ban the Nazis. <laughs> they're they're looking for. I mean, it is a very hey climate change is going to kill us all sort of mentality, which to me, I think is personally speaking, I think it's very counterproductive to trying to solve these issues because like when they do these surveys of school children and how scared they are of the world, you scared people in an action who think it's inevitable. Now. Like they think that yeah. one, Oh no, I will. It's there's nothing I can do now. And it's like, man, why not become a scientist? No, it'll be too late. Nothing I can do. And it's like, that's what's happened to like a lot of young people. Now they just, they've just given up on any idea of, change because it's been told them it's this foregone conclusion and that sort of depresses me about this sort of thing too it's like like i'm all for according to data like that's all cool yeah. like i like great but it, it well, kind and, of and, and i i actually think that there's a fascinating question to be had on on what goes on it uh, like like what if you were to pick you know like let, let's start just for the sake of 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 uh, uh making this a finite conversation like 10 things that needed to be recorded on a daily basis that do regular outputs i would think that you know some element of scientific measurements and recordings, some element of like either temperature or weather patterns, or, I mean, I don't know like where you would pick what, what, the culture, it, but it, I think it's fascinating. Th this is my best attempt to steel man the argument for a physical version of this. Like as a metaphor, uh, I, I could get all on board. It's just the atomic clock redux only about climate. And I get that. But as a physical object, if, in all seriousness, you expected humanity to go away and you wanted to represent the story. I would imagine uh, seismological data um, yeah. uh, 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 that, you know, they say the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The second best yeah. time is right now. Uh, but, but again, like a lot of this, a lot of the things we know about most of the history of the world, we know from, uh, you know, uh, strata of rock and, you know, tree rings and uh, uh, ice core drillings or whatever. But um, uh, uh, seismological data, I guess, temperature records, um, uh, 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 but it might solar be radiation levels yeah. and stuff. I mean, Garfield the comic, Why? Garfield the cartoon, Garfield the feature <laughs> film. Why is it 29 years, 11 months, 29 days, 24 hours, the second best time to plant a tree. Mm. <laughs> well, because they're both still in the past. Well, because, yes. because uh, yeah. They're because, all equally because, impossible. Yeah, you don't, you don't have access that's, uh, to, to, to that time. Well, for the first is 30 years ago, then why can't I have just go back a little bit? I mean. Because <laughs> that time sucked. Well, there's only okay, now. Right. There's only now and thirty sorry, years ago. What, what I mean it. is, those it's times an, rule. It's an infinite in time. Order. It's an infinite tie for first place, but second place goes to right now. <laughs> well put. Well put. Any time before now was yeah. the correct, best time. Correct. It's for the record, for I would also place. put Garfield Two of Tale of Two Kitties <laughs> in the black box. Now, so they mentioned yeah. that these are they're they're storing and saving the data onto hard drives in. Uh, in in the structure, and uh, that that makes me think two things. A, uh, it's it's uh, uh, like yes, Brian, like yes, all of like Earth data and you know meteorological meteorological data, but so there's enough information that is so cheap um, that you can just store it. How much does it take to save you know a KXAN a local news article? And now you have something about the day to day life. Well, but the other. Uh, uh, and, and my other thought is, uh, I, I wonder how long these hard drives will last because hard drives don't live forever. Right. And well, uh, uh, so, so there's um, I think we talked about this on Weird Things maybe about a year ago when I found out a fact that really broke my heart, which was um, too much information is created too quickly. Like if you're going to curate a local KXAN article or whatever, then you can manage that. But if you just want to say capture raw data at the rate that information is being generated and uh, run through various systems, uh, I, it was some astonishing number. I want to say as little as 100 years. At this rate, 
it would take you would have to convert all the mass of planet Earth into hard drives, and right. and and you would run out of room. But um, uh, but I'm not saying we we suck up all of the data. Like not archive.org, but but uh, you know news articles are very cheap. Like it's if if we said no video data, don't put videos. Be very careful about images. But text is very cheap. You know it's 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 pretty cheap to take the transcript or whatever the written article is and throw those save in. Save that somewhere. And I, I yeah. think if you get rid of if you, if you Focus on low data uh, information. Um, I, I don't think it's as dire as that the totality of data that well, we're generating I, right I, now. I mean, Moore's law does apply to storage, though. Like, I haven't needed to increase the size of my phone because it's, even though file formats have gotten ridiculously larger, we can capture a ton. We can capture a lot. And yes, the amount of stuff that's being created, and we talk about like how many hours of YouTube videos are created every day. It's like, yeah, they're all in YouTube. They, they 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 solved that storage issue you know so it is is the cost keep dropping and you know of course it's making use of it but it is interesting how like a storage or the amount of stuff we need to store personally has sort of kind of peaked at a certain point but then that's when you look at look at the size of an iphone photo like how big it is in like it's like it's like you know like five times the memory footprint of the first mac yeah and that's a normal photo now is more you put the entire operating system 3.4 3. megabytes all... i've got 3.4 megabytes from a photo i took on sunday Jeez. and uh yep and uh, the original mac had one megabyte of memory so it's an operating system all that other stuff in there it's so insane uh justin i got a scenario for you go um i want to imagine that like uh you and ash your love of animals increases yes and uh, maybe you decide to get some other animals. Okay. Maybe you get some, I don't know, some snakes. <laughs> okay. Hey. All right. <laughs> Are you, right. are you, what okay. do you think about that snakes? Would, well, that, number one, that would take. Uh, uh, I'd be fine with a snake. I, 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 I think snakes are, are okay. Uh, uh, my wife, very scared of uh, both snakes and spiders. Snakes and spiders are two things that since we moved out to. Texas, she is uh, very much on 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 the lookout for. Well, uh, so may maybe maybe it's not so much that you go out and get snakes, but you discover a couple of snakes around. That that would be a Justin kill the snake situation. So I don't think that would be us taking them in as 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 pets. But let's say for whatever reason, change your heart with her. She's like, let's take in these snakes. I would not have much of a pushback on it. So. Perhaps the thing is you got snakes and I'm saying if like you got into your neighbor's house or they got somewhere and they okay. need to get rid of them. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. So I, I have, I and, have to get rid of these snakes. Yeah. There's... What would you, maybe you want to attract, attract them. What are they like? I would have to find a thing. All right. What is snakes like? Oh man. I don't even, uh, uh yes. snacks, rat house, mice? Slytherin. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> It turns out I'm around a bunch of uh, I'm, soda pop, <laughs> shaming each other. You're all a bunch of hacks. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, succession. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I would guess what? I mean, the snakes don't eat like like corpses, do they? Or like, like meat, right? <laughs> No, like, I, do I throw like like raw meat out there, like it's a velociraptor? Or well, something? mice, right? It's mice. Mice. Well, so it does the meat, right? So we we let but loose you know, a bunch of mice. <laughs> <laughs> then you get a cat problem. Supper. <laughs> but maybe the snakes. The problem is like snakes. You know, they they eat and they just chill out. And they're like, I'm good. They I get, ate, they're big I fat ate in snakes. December of '95. I'm good. Oh, so you need something other than food, possibly. They they're do they they're like cold, like they're, rhythm or, or? Cold, well no those are worms uh, oh, that's some samba well, music I don't know I mean yeah. oh you're a Mr uh, Snake rhythm expert no huh? I, I've only seen Dune uh, that's the only reason I know that uh, that and the Fat Boy Slim song where that's Bootsy right. Collins so when you says say if you walk without rhythm you won't attract the worm <laughs> that's my extent of worm knowledge <laughs> Dune and Bootsy Collins yes got you okay. if you walk without rhythm you'll never learn okay. But yeah, so we don't. All right, they're cold, they're cold blooded. In my dictionary, <laughs> what? It's a Rick James song. Oh, okay. Cold blooded. 
in my dictionary. Anyway. Super freak. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, Andrew, like, in my imagination, there's a snake. And it's like, Justin, get over here. There's a snake. And he, you know, throws it down the sewer or whatever. And then, and then it happens again and again. And at some point, it's like, Justin turns to the camera and says, he wants these mother-father snakes out of this mother-father house. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, did, did you want to get the snakes out. You want right. to get the snakes out of that. You got house. snakes. You How do you get rid of them? Uh, I'm, I'm, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm hitting them with a shillelagh or whatever that dude in Ireland did. Yep, no, that was it. Yeah. St. Patrick. That's it. Yeah. That guy. Ta-da. You know, and all the frat kids got drunk. Okay. Pray, he prayed the snake away. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't actually, I don't, I don't know. If you can't lure him out with food, then I would say maybe, and, 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 and sound apparently has been ridiculed because only worms like it. Then, uh, uh, uh I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm at a loss. So Brian pointed out they're cold blooded. What are things that are cold blooded? Like heat politics. Uh, yes. Heat. <laughs> heat. Oh, heat. so a big radiating source uh, of heat. Okay. You know, some heat. And you know, it's a good, what's a good source of heat? You're in like New England. You're somewhere, you know, kind of where it gets cold. What a do big you have? Campfire, maybe. What do you have a lot of? We like coals. 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 How about some coals? How about we there heat we up go. some coals? All right. Yeah, we'll have a big old, a big old coal burning. <laughs> in indoors. And in well, I mean, we could. I, mean, I guess yeah, so. Yeah. Do do it in the garage or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah open okay. up a big door. Just open up a window. Yeah. So I sent Bryce the CNN article, oh, I got it. which has got some very interesting photos, and uh, reminds me a lot of the Universal Studios Hogwarts nighttime spectacular show. Okay, here we go. Maryland. Oh my God! <laughs> burned down their home while attempting to rid the house of snakes, and uh, boy, that house is lit up. That is <laughs> that is on fire. That is a house on fire. Like, if you light your own house on fire, but then took that picture, I feel like I'd be like, ah, could be worse. <laughs> That's a good photo. It is a pretty good photo, but uh, it's, uh, that house is an inferno. That's- Snake free. Success. <laughs> this is called uh, success stories on weird things. Yeah. Humans, ze- humans one, snakes zero. <laughs> zero. Cut to George Bush in front of the mission accomplished banner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we got him. Uh, wow, so they thought that they could, wait, they were luring them out or in with the heat? They had an infestation of snakes in their house, and they thought, well, let's use some coal or whatever, light up, light up some coal to get them close together and then find them, but the coal kind of got out of control. And they tried to fire. use, uh, they tried to smoke the, the snakes out with the coal, so they used the, the coal to generate the snakes, uh, but quote, they were placed too close to combustible materials, eventually setting the house on fire. Mm. That's uh, that's that's uh, no, number one. Uh, is that a thing to to smoke out the snakes? Is that is that an old saying people have? It's like I've got to smoke. What does out this the mean snakes. to play us out? <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like that's not the thing you DIY, right? <laughs> I have a snake infestation, and I'm going to attempt to smoke them out. I feel like you need to call some I mean, kind also, of pro- like pet professional. Best case scenario is you have no snakes, and your house smells like coal, coal smoke forever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the last sentence in the article. Sorry, the last sentence in the article. The status of the, the snakes. The status. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. The status of the snakes is unknown, but as the house was left in rubble, it's assumed they no longer <laughs> live there. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, we're pretty sure they? it's not in there anymore. Or do they? <laughs> I, I like, I like the difference between Bryce. Well, go back to your paid content ads, <laughs> by the way. And okay, mine aren't the same as yours. Okay. Okay. Uh, I get on the right corner. I get the new comfortable mask taking LA by storm. But my favorite is on the left. Like, I know your audience. Meet the girlfriends of the richest men on the planet, and it's like a big picture of Larry Ellison next to you, like some beautiful woman. And so, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh gosh, I need to know this. Mine is always she died, and it's like the, a picture of the little girl from Jurassic Park. And they never died. No. Li- they literally are never dead. It's, just, it's, it's always just she died. She like, died. What? 
<laughs> Kirstie Alley died? No, she yeah. didn't die. No, she didn't die. <laughs> what? I... Oh. Well, uh, uh, what a bad time of year for that to happen. Oh, my goodness. I'm, uh, that is, uh, oof. Feel bad. Well, you yeah. know the saying. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm... Season's greetings. <laughs> Does anybody have any picks? <laughs> Do you smell something sizzling? Uh, I got a pick that is going to sound like an ad, but they ain't paying me nothing. But I did hear about it from an ad. Um, I signed up for a one-week trial of that Inkle. Com. You hear about this? No. no. Uh, it's basically curated access to, I don't know, millions of articles. Uh, I, 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 all that crap behind the paywall. You go to the Google News and you're like, that looks like a thing I want to read. And it's just like, give us the money. Yeah. Uh, Inkle like, has partnerships with a bunch of those folks. And they select a bunch of articles. And they have this tab called Good News. Just, it's not. How do you, how do you spell Inkle? Because I've got it. I-N-K-L dot com. And uh, 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 here's how they're going to get you. And again, I ain't getting paid for this. Uh, uh, the, the, the way I got got was I clicked log in with Google for a seven day trial. And so any day now they're going to stop giving me access and I'm going to, I don't know how much it costs, but I'll probably end up buying it because it's, it's a lot of fun so to wake it, up it, in the morning it's been, it's and been, not want to punch anyone. It's been pretty good to like, like they've got the right partnerships because n knowing the status of a lot of these newspaper paywalls, uh, places like the Washington post and the uh, New York times having now gotten to the other end of like a total fiscal crisis right. with their audience they are loath to deal to to do any kind of deal where they are not directly in control of their relationship with people who have their paywalls and don't right and and there's a credible argument on a philosophical level to be made for essentially the profit motives for your new york times or washington post or whatever they they essentially have become like um uh, uh, this is an unkind phrase but like hate peddling where it's just like come into our clubhouse and you can hate the other side whoever the other side is but i mean as much yeah as that's want, but that's know? that's as much of a, a i mean that is a driver for them right Correct. there's a reason why they have steered a lot of their news coverage in that direction but it's also for like Obituaries and and food stuff and reviews and of popular books, et cetera. Like like I, the number one thing on the New York Times website, uh, I think yesterday was why does coffee make me poop? Uh, yeah. Like, so 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 uh, right now, uh, uh, top headlines: uh, White House is thinking about boycotting Olympics. Uh, so something political, Bitcoin, something. But then you click on the Good News tab. And, and it says, like, Urban Garden in Rio feeds hundreds of families in former crackland. Kids in Ghana program going strong after 12 years. I don't know. Uh, I'm digging. So, the, so this is the app? This is their uh, app? No, no, no. Or no, this is their uh, website? You, you just go to the website. So, so, so basically, this, this is like those, a Google News substitute. Correct. Gotcha. Only, only it's curated, and it gets you behind paywalls, and you don't constantly, and it's not just feeding you red team, blue team nonsense. All right. So looking at stuff that has hard paywalls, I'm seeing the Atlantic. Uh, uh, lots of I've seen a few articles from the Guardian. Some Guardian really just tells you, please pay us. Uh, we, yes. we would really like money <laughs> but, but, now. But you don't you don't see it when you're on the Inkle app. You don't. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, likewise. Um, uh, oh, there's a couple of others on there. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, they also try to avoid listicles or garbage things with clickbaity headlines or whatever. Like you could tell. Whatever their algorithm is, it's it's not trying so, to bubble you. I mean, basically, what I am reading here, there is not a ton of paywall skipping, but if the curation is right, that 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 is the entire product. I mean, I've definitely felt better about the world <laughs> since uh, for one week now. <laughs> since you've been screwing around with ankle. Right, exactly. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I... Go ahead. Flirted with Apple News doing that. Yeah, like, how did that go? I flirted with it. I haven't actually committed to it. Mm, hey. What's up? Winky face. Apple <laughs> News. Justin well, part it. of it, in my understanding, it's all inside the app kind of thing. And that yeah. was sort of the thing. It's like, I don't want to get kicked out of a thing into another app when I'm doing research. The last thing I wanted, and like to me, I'm like, well, that sort of was a no-go for me. It was like, oh, yeah, click here. Click here to read this in Apple News. No, I, I don't what that <laughs> yeah yeah it, it's it's super weird i i i really do wish that 
there is somebody, be it Apple or Inkle or something like that, that was able to make a deal with some of these bigger uh, uh, organizations to just say like, okay, well, not everything can skip your paywall, but can we get three things? Can we pay you right. to get three stories a day? Like, and then they go I, away after that? Like we only ever have three stories from you? I don't want cable news, but I do want cable for news is is where i'm at yeah it, it's yeah that's that's a that's a messy sticky situation uh all right i and, have a, and i just go ahead i just want sorry to write and i write people to check out your local library system to find out what things they subscribe to because there's often with your library card you can get access to a lot of uh mm. different news sources good point um i have a pick that is not a pick uh hey friends it's your old pal justin robert young here uh, uh, do you remember watching Tiger King last year? <laughs> I do remember that. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. I do. Fun and rollicking, uh, 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 colorful characters. Well, hmm. don't worry. Tiger King 2 is here. Oh, hey. Uh, uh, it, it strips out all that annoying character and charisma <laughs> uh-huh. and decides to make a very, very rote true crime version of all the things that you've already heard about with very minimal to non-existent new developments and no acknowledgement that there's been a passage of time where this story has become very, very famous, at Wait. least in the first two episodes. Oh, okay. Because I, I feel like that was a part of the trailer where they were like, oh, we like our world has changed because of the show. Absolutely. And yet the first episode is just a rehash of the Carol Baskin thing oh. uh, with like a few more interviews with... Uh, uh, other people that are like, yep, he died or disappeared. And maybe it was her, but we have no proof. And they're they're going to do another spinoff of the Doc Antle guy and his story is what I, I believe I remember hearing. I have no idea. All I know is that, know. that, that, that uh, 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 we gave it a spin because Tiger King was its own phenomenon. And boy, was it boring as hell through the first two episodes. Uh, uh, that's not my pick though. Here's a good documentary. <laughs> uh, have you guys seen 30 for 30? The 30 for oh, 30s, sure. yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so the uh, main guy behind 30 for 30 is a man by the name of Bill Simmons, and he now has a new series on HBO called Music Box, and it is uh, for music. But so for, uh, you know, similar to the kinds of stories that were told in 30 for 30 for sports, this is for uh, music. They have one on Woodstock 99. Uh, the one I watched uh, with Ashley over the weekend was uh, about, all about Jagged Little Pill, the Alanis Morissette record. Um, good stuff. I I feel like I've seen these advertised. Uh, what is the, it's called Music Box? Music Box is the series. So, so imagine it. in the same way that none of the 30 for 30s necessarily connected to each other. They were all individual Correct. stories. That's the overarching umbrella. And they all had individual names under the. Yeah. yeah. So there's one about DMX. There's one about Kenny G. There's one about uh, Juice World. Uh, uh, but it's a fairly diverse uh, a collection of, of stuff. And, you know, the, the, the Jagged Little Pill one was uh, good. Lattice Four sets as you know, uh, uh, delightful and and loopy as as uh, she's ever been, and uh, uh, she talks a lot. Like, uh, uh, and it's it's a, an album that really deserves the kind of recognition that it 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 deserves its own documentary. It was a gigantic album, and it is one of those from beginning to end listenable albums. Yeah, that that was striking. Also, I did not know that Alanis Morissette had a past. As like a a a teeny bopper, oh yeah, uh, I, I was, uh, that was not her first album. That was not her no, debut. No, yeah, uh, uh, and so they go into that. They they show kind of like everything that she was sort of before, uh, uh, and then you know leads through not only the album being made but also the tour that followed. And they were like on the road for like a year and a half with that. It was it was wow. a massive tour. Uh, so jagged is the 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 uh, Alanis Morissette doc. And uh, man, it actually reminded me between that and the Beatles doc, like the normalization of upscaling old footage so it looks Good. really vivid and, and amazing is something that I think brings a lot of these stories so much more to life. Because for whatever you think of, of Get Back, it would be unwatchable if they did not upscale 
that that footage like that needed to happen like we needed to technically technically be able to do that to make it eight hours watchable um and and similar with this you see so much concert footage uh and and old home movies i guess they did a lot of home movies on that on that tour the only bummer is that every face in the crowd is ryan reynolds <laughs> that's that's yeah. how it works they yeah they uh, uh uh there's there's some conversations about uh uh some of the the, the 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 gendered elements of uh the reception to that her who she wrote you want to know about which i think she don't don't go in looking for any kind of firm answers on that like i think she's been intentionally vague she's intentionally vague here uh but but also the fact that she had an all male band she was very uh uh and she is unrepentant on that that she wanted she said it was as soon as you establish that there's not going to be a sexual thing that like it's easier to work with guys than it was with girls that's her statement in the doc uh but then had to deal with the fact that uh boy did the all male band uh uh uh, find themselves in a a advantageous situation when the crowds that were coming to see alanis morissette also (laughs) Ah. found out that a bunch of cute guys were playing in the band uh, and and Alanis had to uh, 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 tamp that down a little bit as they were handing out free backstage passes liberally, uh, uh, assuming that the bounty would fall to them. Wow, the jagged bucket of ice. Yeah, yeah. So there's I mean, look, it's 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 good, and and it's one of those things where it's like, wow, that that album did deserve that kind of recognition. So music box, I'm I'm looking forward to watching the rest of it. Nice. Um, I've got a, a quick pick. So I've, I've got uh, the Apple Arcade, and uh, over the past few months or so, they are starting to say, like, hey, here is, like, a really popular old app. We have asked them to, like, make update this and pull out the ads and stuff. And um, I did not expect to really enjoy this one that they had just done it to, but uh, it is something that I've been playing a lot. It is uh, Crossy Road Plus. Uh <laughs> Crossy Road, the uh, the uh, endless Frogger like game from a million years ago, um, is like kind of reformatted. They've got like objectives and missions, and there's it's 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 interesting. Um, and something about playing Crossy Road and really any of these games that are you know designed for these really addictive gameplay loops where the ads have been stripped out. Um, it just feels it just always feels a little nicer. I I I I don't I don't know how much to I, there more there is beyond that kind of base observation. Uh, but uh, in my in my wildest fantasies, it's like um, the improved version includes like a green screened guy wearing a four star general outfit saying, "Listen up, chicken! I need to cross. You better cross that road." <laughs> with these cutscenes in between each it's, one. It's 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 a lot. Of, it's not it's not like that at all. It's <laughs> it's a lot of like, hey, uh, here are little. It's all a lot of little objectives, right? Like, go get three coins. Go jump on a lily pad. And when you do that, you get a little bit of coins. And every so often, you get new characters. And the whole point is to unlock all of the like hundred some characters that they've got in the game um which which is actually kind of nice like I, I i talked about this with the word web game the like single player um scrabble like game a few weeks ago but like just having objectives for a game that is otherwise like endless or like a solitaire type of game really um uh, really gets you gets you going gets you motivated let's like, keep playing um without uh uh needing needing to have in-app purchases be the motivation for behind that loop so I, I dig it, and I kind of didn't think I would dig Crossy Road, but guess what? Crossy Road still whips. So nice. I I uh, I have Apple Arcade, and I tried. I remember you mentioned the Word Web before game, and I remember I tried it on the Apple TV. The controls for it are complete garbage, even oh, though it yeah. should be simple. It's it's not. Most and of I those remember I got frustrated. And I, are not great for TV. What's that? Most of those games are, are not great. Some are, but yeah, a lot, a lot of them are not. Yeah, it, and sometimes they'll say controller, and it's not really good for a controller. And then, and then I have a controller too. I just too lazy. I just if I got the Apple TV in my hand, I just control. That was not fun. But solitaire, the the solitaire oh, game right. they have on there, where it's the whole it is the story mode and all that is. I've I've like gone through every single different version. So what it is. It starts off the story, and the story is like, oh, you've got to help a king and the queen meet, and these characters talk, and there's a voiceover to this. First, you know, you've got to win four rounds, and so it's a themed, you know, solitary gameplay. Then there's another level of the story. 
all they've done is just added story, you know, cutscenes to Klondike Solitaire, <laughs> and it's really fun. <laughs> it's just the, the music changes, the tempo changes. I am a I have terrified that how much I play it, and then when I see my, you know, how far up on the leaderboard I move. Um, but uh, it is a lot of fun, and that's that solitaire game of just like when I'm laying in bed and I don't want to get too engaged, I just want to play something to make me go to sleep. So Apple it, Arcade Solitaire. Nice. It's just it, all of the Apple Arcade stuff. I mean, not that I love every game on there, but just knowing I can go in there and they don't have to make the game designed around how do we serve you a million ads or how do we make you yeah. buy a bunch of gems. Yep. Uh, just feel, it it's just amazing. feels nice. It just feels like you have like you got both of your hands in there. It's amazing when the agreement is, I will give you money. <laughs> you respect my attention. Yeah. And not like, wow, uh, sorry, that player needs to cool down for a half hour unless you give me $3. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, mm -hmm. it's been weird. All right. All right. I need 62 seconds. Same. Go. All right. I don't, I don't need nothing. What? Nothing I don't need right that. Uh, you know what I watched the other night, Justin? Would you watch Bryce? I uh, uh, so Succession, Succession season three is on, yeah. and uh, I kind of went back and have been watching season two a little bit, um, ah. just to relive relive the memories, the memories of the Roys. At uh, the episode I last watched, I believe, was the um, uh, the surprise birthday party for for Logan, where uh, uh, I think infamously Kendall raps. Uh, oh, in the L to the OG. L to the OG. L to the OG. Dude, be the OG. OG. And a yes, he's playing. playing. It's playing like a pro. See, <sighs> it's. I think the line uh, there that I will never forget is because I stand dad, I'm alive and well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the yeah, it's no secret I've been through hell, but because I stand dad, I'm alive and well. What, a, what an amazing, amazing it, sentence. It's it's so it's so great, especially at that point where because Kendall is like broken a little bit, right? Yeah. And it's like the first time in that season that you see him kind of like wake come up. alive, but he's like in the most sycophanty way that we have ever seen him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um and uh, I I really dug last night's episode. They packed oh. a lot into last night's episode. You could really feel like this this is the episode that felt like oh they only have they they lost an episode. They got one less episode this season, <laughs> so they really squish, squished everything in. There there was a lot. There was a I'm lot. Trying to use a restroom and I'm getting concession spoilers. No spoilers. With my AirPods uh, and I have to yank them out. They were. They weren't spoilers. I don't. All I hear is season two in this episode. I'm like, I don't want this. Oh, uh, uh, right. yeah. Um, uh, well then I want well, more you're about in, the you're, show. You're in season two now, right? I all I, I yeah, but I don't. Do you know where I'm at? Or I didn't know about. Oh, you I said. know. I know it's, at least one part that you're at. No, I'm. We're almost at the last uh, last episode we're of season two. That. Oh, then you'd seen. You yeah. already seen that episode. That we were talking about. I didn't know what you're gonna say, so I okay. didn't know what yeah, was happening. I'm sorry. Don't use Brian justification for spoilers. I, no. I didn't know you were listening. Okay, sorry. Uh, uh, I always but, listen. <laughs> no, but, but 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 you've seen L to the OG, right? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a great it's sequence. Amazing. Yeah. And his 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 uh his like baseball his Yankee Yankee yeah. outfit. Yeah. Oh. Okay. L Such a good job. OG. Yeah. Uh, just. A N he playing. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. Um, yeah, I, I texted Justin because when they had when they met with the Pierces, that family, I'm like, I have been there. I know these people, and I know that in my favor. It's like, yeah, I'm working on my second PhD. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that that, and I I've, I've met these trust fund babies that are like oh. searching for value in the world, and like I could you know I'm like. Oh man, like yeah, it's somebody that the writing there is so vivid because like, yep, and this is and some of them were writing on the show, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I think the 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 thing that I've loved from the beginning with that uh, uh show is that like, they don't spare any of the characters. They are all kind of rightly mocked, but they do understand them. They all have motivations. You kind of, you, you get it. Like if anything, it is always the explanation 
of of their motivations that kind of drives the plot and the story. Uh, but but even like just the Pierce, just that whole episode of of that whole Jetsons meets the Flintstones world is just so yeah. great. Um, uh, all right, want to jump into this? Let's go. Ready. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that another time. Uh, ignore that email that I sent you. You can ignore that email. We'll we'll do that another day. Deleted. Ignore it. <laughs> Alrighty, then uh, let's start after things here in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm joined with my podcasting partner, Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, partner. Oh, Brian and Justin are here, too. Oh, hey, pro Brian, move. Pro Brian, move. Brian, I was Brian. definitely mid-sneeze, and I was so, just like, he's going to call on me in the middle of the sneeze. No. And you didn't. Pro and, move. And Justin Robert Young. Hey, what's going on? So now that we're here. Yeah. Cool. It's, it's, it's four. It's fine. Um, I want to talk about, actually, this was a story that I saw was kind of interesting. I The headline was a little bit, uh, uh, the headline is, a little bit sensational, which it's it's from The Verge, which I enjoy their coverage. Um, but it's about uh, Kat Norton, and she is a TikToker who the headline says she's making six figures a day. And what they you read in there, like, no, she had a day where she made like six figures, which you know is still and quite an achievement. That's you a look lot. At her business model, yeah, it, yeah it's, it's uh, fantastic. It's a great, great business model, whatever. But you know, you'd read that and think, oh my god, how? Then you're like, oh. No, there's a real business here, which is even more fascinating. Uh, Kat Norton, a.k.a. Miss Excel. Anybody know what her business model is? Anybody know what she does? Oh, Excel. She's got a million, Excel? Excel she's got a million tricks, followers. Uh, uh, little, 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 little tips and formulas and tricks for Excel spreadsheets. Ding, ding. Na- nailed it. Wow. Really? She TikToks about Microsoft Excel. You know, and then what she does is she sells courses on how to power courses on Microsoft Excel. Wow. This, this reminds me that there was a TikTok trend. Uh, maybe it's still going on a little bit, but a few months ago, uh, TikTokers really got into Notion uh, mm-hmm. sim- because it's like you, it's like journaling and a wiki and all these different productivity things in one in one thing. So I'm not. So I'm kind of not surprised that Excel also has. A, no, there's audience. there's a lot of how to stuff. I I know. Uh, uh, my my wife spends a lot more time on TikTok than I do, but uh, uh, one of the things that constantly pops up for her are like little iPhone hacks of of like here's how you can use your accessibility thing to do various things between the phone and the watch and blah 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 blah. But but there's there's a lot of that. I mean, it's it's fascinating to watch TikTok as it grows and see what elements of the kind of YouTube space before it does it take and and distill down and what parts it to kind of totally eschews. It's 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 fascinating. So it's, I, I thought, I love this because it was a great, if somebody had said, hey, I want to do, on the surface, you'd be like, why would you do that? Somebody says, okay, I want to go do a TikTok course. Or I'm going to do TikTok and I'm going to TikTok, let's say, advice on, you know, spreadsheets. Other people are like, well, who's going to watch that? And it's like, well, here's the thing. One person watching you for your Excel spreadsheets is probably a, worth a thousand times more than one person watching you to do a magic trick or something. Yep. Because guess what? Their livelihoods depend upon it. And it's a model that I saw years ago of like, if you sell a thing that's directly related to like day, every day somebody works with this thing or needs to do this sort of stuff. So you have a million followers, right? Now, if you get out of a million and you're not even talking about like, well, if I capture 1%, you're not even gonna capture 1%. But if you capture, you know, a, a, a you know half of a percent of them really like you enough to go buy your course, you're making a hundred grand every time you put out a course. Hmm. And that's it's smart. It's fascinating. And and it also is an example of kind of why TikTok as a platform kind of would recognize that is that y- unlike YouTube, you didn't have to search for Excel hacks. You didn't then have to like that video so much that either YouTube's algorithm recommended another one for you or you subscribe to it because you really, really, really love Excel hacks. You could just be interested enough in it that it will serve you new ones and now all of a sudden you realize oh i really love excel hacks and now i'm going to sign up for this course because it's like i i use it at my office and boy would it be cool to learn to not have to go to tiktok to remember these things and have them in one general place or learn new things 
Uh, so when it comes to like uh, maybe, let's say, teaching of magic tricks, that is a solution in need of a problem. And uh, in the case of launching Scam School, uh, uh, I said, the whole introduction was like, hi, you have a problem. You pay for your own beverages at the bar. You're not the most interesting person in the room. I have the solution. It's called these tricks that I will refuse to call magic. Uh, Excel hacks don't have to push much farther. It's like, uh, you have a problem. Uh, here's the solution. That's it. <laughs> like, like, wait, we yeah. don't have to invent and, and the problem. You, yeah, and your formula, too, is similar because it was like, there were lots of magicians that were either one, oh, I'm going to go do magic for everybody on you know YouTube, which is fine. There's a lot of great magic out there, but it's not. It's a really hard business model. Uh, some people were like, I'm just going to expose videos and count, you know, hope I get revenue. And it's like, no, you're not going to build an audience. You're not going to, you're not going to, People aren't going to feel fulfilled afterwards, like they learned to do a thing. With your, your, you build an audience where, like, hey, spend ten minutes with me. You're going to have the most rewarding experience tomorrow when you show this to your friend, and that's and that's the sort of thing where you say, like, it's it's that, like, yeah, you, that audience is wonderful because that audience is like, oh yeah, I'm sitting, I'm willing to learn, I'm willing, I want this thing, I need this thing, you to solve this problem for me, and that's that's a great inversion of like what other people do. Well, and, and the difference also is like what I have to do for, for scam nation and scam school is convince people the thing they want should take the long way around evolving magic. Whereas like, if you're looking for Excel hacks of any variety, you're already at problem land and, yeah. and now you're going exactly where they are. Uh, uh, the but thing I still think, I still think like you did the, you always said, right, but your model still was a great model because you said, okay, if people like magic. And it's like, oh, I'll do magic in there. Like, no, like, I think a lot of people would like, would like something they get out of learning it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, was, I was curious to, to see how sh she had this set up um, because we've talked about, like, Udemy a lot before. We've talked about there are a lot of platforms out there for putting uh, educational content out there. And there are a lot of people who make very popular uh, courses on there. Um, but you go to her website and it's kind of her own rolled thing. Um, and then uh, I, I, I looked and uh, she's using something called Thinkific. Think, thinkific? Th thinkific. And I'm, I'm assuming that, that the decision to do that versus something like a Udemy or something where they've got like a CDN or any sort of backbone would be that the, you get a better cut. You get all the money. I Which mean, is I, I interesting. Would, I would, That's I would, more rolling would, your own. I would presume, I, I do not know if, if Thinkific is, is what I think it is, but if it is basically a video delivery version of Shopify, then it's probably right. If, a, if, a, if it's a white label version. Yeah. Of, okay, so of here, yes. Yeah, oh, so it's so, a flat so, fee. Yeah, so basically, yeah. Uh, you just pay them a monthly fee to have it they are not going to care if you make a million dollars or ten dollars as long as you keep paying their monthly thing. Huh. That's interesting because I'm, I'm sure Udemy takes a takes a percentage which oh, yeah. which scales up as you get popular. Yeah. Or Yeah, and Udemy often what you'll people will have courses and then when they get a little some some there are a couple of models on Udemy because like I am like a huge consumer of Udemy courses. Sometimes somebody has a course, they put it out for six months or a year and it does its lifespan and then they they their their audience is tapped out. Then they'll put it on a Udemy, maybe update it a little bit or whatever, and then Udemy brings in its audience. And then, because like Udemy, you buy, buy them when they're twelve bucks. You buy them when they're twelve bucks. You know, some people go, oh, "I spent two hundred, wait for a sale." Like, ah, I wasn't gonna wait a sale. Like, they're every four days. Yeah. You know. Um, but uh, I think that sometimes it's like you could take a course from one place and then you move it to there. And but the quality of stuff that's updated in Udemy is fantastic. Like, like I just I'm taking stuff all the time there. But yeah. There's. A, I think for, for somebody as defined as her, uh, you know exactly what she's about. She's not really known. It's like, like oh, and I also do basket weaving and dancing. It's like, no, no, no. She does Excel hacks. If you want more Excel hacks, go to her website. You go to her website, she's got Excel hacks. Boom. That is that is that is what it is. And, and, and the way that she finds new people to be interested is not the network effect of Udemy, but the network effect of TikTok, where she's a good content host. Yeah, and it, it 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 makes sense to to do it herself because it, it looks like she does kind of the whole Microsoft suite, which is, uh, you know, I think about me using Udemy to like learn coding and stuff, and I you know I got that JavaScript course, and I could probably figure out next steps or next things, but I think most people will know. Well, you know, I know Excel, but I would also like to know more about Word or Access or what whatever had PowerPoint, um, and so there's also almost a bit of like 
mainstreamness of like there's a lot of recognition with Excel um, that you can that she she can own um, by having all these uh, you know an, not ancillary but supplementary secondary uh, courses. That's that's also a good brand in that um, it's fairly unlikely that Microsoft is going to take her to task for promoting the, that particular brand. Sure. You know, like if I were to say I'm the Nintendo kid <laughs> or whatever, like I'm, I'm going to get a, a, a cease and desist pretty quick uh, in a way that I don't think would happen with Excel. Mm. Sure. I'm yeah. sure they encourage it. You know, it's yeah. the number one computing platform on the planet. And Excel. the Nintendo Kid? Oh, Excel. <laughs> Excel. Yeah, Excel. Nintendo Kid's like second, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, Excel. And we don't often think of it like, no, because it does functions and all that other stuff. And so yeah. it's, you know, incredibly how pervasive it is and how many people have to work with it. And uh, spreadsheets are a magical art. Knowing what you can do with a spreadsheet, I, I've made the plea before to people. And, you know, I've had a couple times in my life where I've shown really intelligent, smart people like, no, it's not just graph paper where you put things into. You can change this thing here, and it'll change that there. And it's like if you say, oh, our budget's this now, now you see that happen. And, you know, there are power users and people that have built, you know, incredible, you can build intelligent systems to help you figure out really sophisticated things doing it. And even for, uh, I've mentioned this before, like when, you know, being an independent creator and it can be stressful when, you know, you have, you put in a lot of work and it takes time to see that through, you know, spreadsheets were my rosary, you know, I can yeah. just go look at a spreadsheet, look at my data. Yeah. Just as we talked about before, just and see me with my spreadsheet and stuff. Oh, I'm absolutely. Looking at stuff and going, yeah. No. And I was one of those people that Andrew had to explain that functions happen on spreadsheets. I, I had, I had no <laughs> idea. I was, I was uh, updating everything <laughs> like, you know, with, with a calculator. He's like, Hey, ding dong, you know, you can just hit these things and it just <laughs> happens. Let me plus and yeah. add. And, I was like, what? And... and because it's enterprise, yeah. it's, it's, it's not, like that stuff's not intuitive. It's not meant to be intuitive. It is ultimately a professional yeah. software, and it, there's not, uh, you know, it doesn't come with a walkthrough of like here's functions, here's all. You you, know. you can Apple's tried that a bit with numbers. You know, they've tried to do that, and the the, the interoperability of spreadsheets is great. Um, I I I will make a plea for anybody if you're like spreadsheets. Like I would like, like legit spreadsheets are why PC personal computers happened yeah when it was like mitch kapoor or with the guys who created lotus when they decided hey you know you because people like computers like you, you could hold recipes in them and then somebody's like <laughs> i can hold tables of information so what like i gotta figure out my budget i gotta yeah. figure this out and then the idea of like oh yeah no it can do things with numbers that you don't just do with a calculator because that was things people get stuck into thinking they thought the computer was just a calculator. Like, oh, it's not even a good calculator because it doesn't do float point numbers like my Texas instrument. And it's like, yeah, but your calculator can't keep track of five different rows and go do this and do that. And Apple II can. And that realization just shook the world of finance. Like, if you go look at a hedge funds or hedge funds, entire things that are entirely built upon pricing matrix and things like this that do this in really well run mom and pop stores. Put everything like, oh, you know, what what do we charge for napkins? I don't know, fifty bucks a month. Let's put that in there. Oh, it was ninety three dollars last month, and I noticed our storage room. You know, we've got eight hundred dollars extra napkins. Like, oh, well, we could Excel yeah. stories. Excel at it, Brian. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> oh no, no, no. I I, uh, I I remember feeling like I was getting away with something in seventh grade when we were learning how to use. Uh, I think it was Lotus one two three or some version of it. Uh, but it was uh, on an Apple IIe with a 80 column card, so I, you know, you had tinier words. Uh, I, I remember getting you. an A plus for cataloging our entire comic books collection, uh, hmm. which which felt so crazy and esoteric and selfish at the time. And I felt like I didn't deserve an A plus because, like, oh, I mean, all I did was catalog these 3,000 comic books by, yeah. you know, it, it would tag them by artist and publication status and date and order and issue and whatever. And I look back and I'm like, no, yeah, that's legit. That's, yeah. uh, I was doing the right thing and learning the right I, lessons. I created a better version of the Dewey Decimal System. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, I, and, 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 and if I was like, yeah, didn't that happen? And then I could go call it up. And, and once you get into functions and, and, and all that, I mean, you're, you're basically programming. Like you are like building... It's kind of ad hoc. It's not exactly writing, you know, just source code, but 
it, you're you're making an interface to do to for productivity for a tool. And uh, once you start diving into that, I think that opens the door to other like, oh well, what, da- what if I go further? What about databases? Oh, what about conditional math or, or what, whatever happens? Well, but- and, and having the, that skill set in your back pocket just shows up at the most surprising of times. Um, when we launched the online store, which I can't believe is coming up on its 10 year anniversary, you know, we had to figure out some kind of rough idea as to, you know, how much of this was profit, how much was expenses and all that stuff. And so we have this master document that breaks down, okay, fixed expenses, rough per unit costs, and we bake in a little bit of wiggle room based on, you know, some percentage of these are going to be returns or, mm-hmm. or not be able to be sold or whatever. And uh, by, by having all those nested functions, it makes it so, so easy to just open it up and be able to, at a glance, see where you're at, how much you're about to owe whoever, and and what's next on the agenda. I mean, it's it, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so just clarity on uh, the the background of the history of the spreadsheets and stuff like that. So you had VisiCalc on the Apple, but Lotus Notes, the precursor to that, which was like from 1973, that was Mitch Kapoor. There's a whole, there's books written about like, where did this come from sort of thing? And it's to me, it's a very fascinating topic. Um, but yeah, it was on the Apple, but yeah, it was it was Dan Brook and it was the VizCalc. That was the thing there. And that really was sort of the breakthrough moment. And some of these had been, there's a lot of great ideas, like uh, some, there are tools right now, and those were tools that were sort of in some form being used elsewhere, that if you can make them accessible to other people and people see the advantage of that, they'll go open up their mind. And like, one of the things that like, I, I tell people like, oh, like, you know, the future is going to be, you know, it's going to be coding notebooks, coding notebooks. And most people have no idea what they are. And uh, Jupiter is a form of that. And basically, when you want to write something, you have a cell and you put your little code there and then you can have a cell text or have an output. And when you use this, we use this all the time in AI stuff because you, oh, I brought in my data set here. Now I'm going to display the data. Now I'm going to do this and change this here you can do really, really cool stuff with it. And it's a thing that I think kind of like how spreadsheets eventually became the way we did stuff is you start using complex AI systems to do interesting work. Where does that live? Do you have to build Mm. an app around it or do you build some sort of interface? So if you go to colab.google.com, C-O-L-A-B, it'll first, it'll be like, what is this? Then if you do a tutorial and play with it, you're like, oh, I just used a cloud computer to do some stuff here, and then you get into the data science and stuff. And I think that's going to be the next big leap is when that becomes, that gets pulled into the workplace. And that becomes a really sort of, you know, part of our workplace and the way we work with stuff. Because if you click on the tab there, Bryce, for like data science, when you're like, oh, I have I have 10,000 orders from uh, my uh, shopping cart company. I'm going to go build, I'm just going to go search through that data myself and find out like what was the peak product time or what was this or when were people into things. And at first people go like, oh, I don't know, that sounds complicated. So was sending an email once. Yeah. Yeah. Point. yeah. So, um, it's fun. And I would, like, that would be like my, my, my advice or pick to people is like, if you kind of are sort of a little maybe interested in code or whatever is to play with one of these notebooks, like Google Colab is just great because it's just, you don't install anything. It's just a thing you open up in a browser and you're like, oh, I'll type this and oh, the, it, the program did a thing. And you do these, the people will put together, you can put together tutorials. You open up somebody else's notebook and says, okay, in this cell, go do this. And this thing happens. You can do stuff with image manipulation. Uh, let me pull up the Colab. That might be, I might be Mr. Colab. That's going to be my deal. Hmm. Um, is uh all sorts of things like from like how to work data tables uh people now like if i want to teach people stuff i show them like how to do there so i'm going to shut up collab 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 cool uh well then i i'll make my pick a vaguely programming related thing although it's not really program i guess it is programming but uh if this then that ifttt.com so much fun uh if you have any kind of smart devices that talk to the internet, then set up simple if-then statements. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun. I set up a little adventure where you start in one room and then various Sonos speakers call you to different other rooms. <laughs> and then when you get in there, the security system detects motion, which triggers the next event and on and on and on. It's It's silly and fun and I love it. And that's a great example of where 
I, as a programmer, I look at, I look at this and I'm like, oh, well, I can access the APIs and I can do this sort of stuff and da, da. And you're like, yeah, I just pressed a button, dude. And it's done. Yeah. <laughs> and, it really and, is. And it's, the leap, it's, and that's, it's just, uh, yeah. uh, Hey, do you have this thing? Do you have this other thing? Do you have this third thing? What do you, what do you like space? Great. Uh, just press this button. And when the international space station is viewable, in your uh, zip code, we will play this song on your Sonos and the lights will flash. And I'm like, cool. Um, it is, it's amazing. And that's the thing I have to get out of that mentality. Cause like, I'll go like on Hacker News and stuff and people are like, well, why don't you just do this? And I'm like, technology is about not having to do that other thing. Exactly. It's about a button. And so, yeah, if this, then that's great. Remember way back in the day, Yahoo pipes, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there, there's this, yeah. Um, there's a few others that are like that out there. And I think that when you're an individual working with them, uh, it's cheap if you're trying to scale it up to enterprise. It gets expensive, but yeah, for like, yeah, yeah I think absolutely. I think I bought a year's that, worth for about a hundred dollars, and I I feel like I'm going to get more than a hundred dollars of enjoyment of setting up all these nested mm -hmm. events. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've I've had a a, a rocky experience with IFTTV T T T T T over the years on the free plan, and it, if you're not paying for them, they really it's it's not. It's, there's some really weird things about the way I mean, that yes, website works. I, totally. I, I went from free to paid to paid platinum premium in about 45 minutes. Uh -huh. I was, as I as I understood it well enough, it was like, well, yeah, like, uh, no, I wanted to do that. Okay, fine, yeah. fine, fine. I have, I, I've had an account there for uh, a, a very long time, and I don't think that I am allowed to delete the actions that don't work on there anymore i just don't know how I, do, yeah. I don't i don't know how to do it it does not seem possible so like there's, there's another one which is like that zapier which is really popular oh, yeah. and i looked at there once and i was talking to like in another developer friend and like i'm like man this they're so expensive for what they do but then we're like i bet if you're a company and you know you pay for the service and it's just useful nobody ever stops to think like, do we need to be paying $200 a month for what we're doing there? Because it just solves the problem to them. The problem is solved. And sometimes solving that problem in a couple buttons in, is worth more than. Yeah. No. In, in fact, uh, I, I'll make my pick. I've talked about this before, but, uh, 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 uh air table is a really, oh, lovely. A, a really good way to get into using databases. Um, kind of uh, similar to a spreadsheet, but more, uh, a little function oriented. I think they, they just recently, updated the, the website to uh so that you can build user interfaces in the app and then those tie directly into your Airtable database um which is which is really interesting um I've, I've been using it for for the marble stream and we run our whole stats uh database in there and it's not perfect it would it's probably not as efficient as if we ran our own database somewhere but uh i know a little bit about how to use the database and it's it works for the thing that i need uh and it's not that expensive yeah, for that one person Airtable, yeah, Airtable was a thing that was super exciting because they said, let's, the idea of a database and a spreadsheet can be confusing. And, and technically, a spreadsheet's like a database that just kind of has some math to it. But Airtable's like, let's take a database, let's make it look like a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So you have all that capability in there. And, and I have friends, as soon as they have to do any kind of data management, they get frustrated, like Google Sheets, whatever. Then they go to Airtable and they're like, oh my God, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, especially because they, they have, a, they have like, uh, templates or or they, they they've got productivity uses out of it too so if you're not just building a hard uh, you know a, a, a hard nosed uh database table you can still like use it as a way to track work things without getting really deep into um i don't know get, getting super deep into coding and functions and all like uh, but if you want more details subscribe to the tiktok channel by bryce mr airtable <laughs> yeah right. sir airtable <laughs> yeah his airness. Alrighty, is that it? Yeah, I don't really have a good programming pick, but but I, I, I back I, I back all your plays. I back all of your plays. Right. Succession's still great. Gentlemen, it's been after. Hey, there we go. Alrighty, everybody. Uh BioCal points out free has gotten worse and worse. Free gets bad on systems where free users add nothing to the value of the system. And TikTok, it's free because like people are great, whatever, but you, you don't pay to watch TikTok because they're monetized other ways. But a lot of platforms, 
there's a great book, Chris Anderson Free, which yep. I love. But the thing, if I would say, if you're to follow up, I mean, he just rips into Facebook, which is hilarious. So he's like, Facebook's business model. We'll see. We'll see how much value they're going to really get. And it's like, that's the thing I forgot to mention is the address was like, people get locked into like, oh, the one, the 1,000 true followers kind of thing or whatever, which yeah. I think is valuable. But there is the idea of when you're on a platform like it's like, like it's hard to monetize, you know, 500 people that kind of like you hard to monetize 10,000 people that kind of like you. But when you get to a million people that kind of like you, but if you have a product that's like a $300 course, you know, the percentage of people that signed up for that course is like 0.001% of her TikTok followers, which people are like, how do you build a model? You charge more because those people are going to have and want that knowledge. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty, everybody. Well, we are going to go offline. We'll be back in a couple of hours with Cord Killers. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah. Have a good Monday. See ya. Yep. Later.